So you want to color your portrait in Procreate but you do not want to pick colors from a photo and dump it into your painting because probably you feel like that's cheating. So actually you can have more control over your life, I mean um, colors. But speaking of life, I recently have a new Procreate setup because my neck was hurting so much I had to use a Sketchbook Pro which I just purchased over the net. And I also have this really cool gadget called the Procreate Keyboard Shortcut Gadget and I will be dumping a review of this unit really really soon. So anyway, this is the portrait that we will be painting today. This is the colour palette that we will be using today. Here we have the skin tone with the red and the orange base and then also we must have our black and white and also we will have our primary colours blue, red and yellow. So the question is how do we actually create this palette and where do we pull the colours from? When we talk about creating our own palette, we want to have our own custom primary colors. So we're going to pick our blue, red and yellow. So these are not the traditional blue, red and yellow that you see here. We can basically pick any blue, red and yellow that we want. And this will actually create like a triangle of colors that we can use. So if the blue that we pick are a bit faded and to the grey side, this will be at the maximum intensity or vibrancy that we allow it to be. So we are basically setting the maximum intensity for every primary color that we choose. This means that we'll be setting limitation for the vibrancy and brightness for our colors and we'll also be limiting our color palette to just three colors. So once we have decided on our primary colors, we will have three colors in our palette already. And then maybe when we are working, we wanted to have green. So if we go to the color wheel and pick green now, this means that we no longer have a three color palette. We have a number of four colors in our color scheme then. This is not what we want. We only want a limited amount of colors in our palette which is just three colors. So if we want to have green, we cannot pick it out from the color wheel. We have to mix the colors ourselves. So here I'm just fading the blue and the yellow towards each other and picking the colors in between to get our greens. This means that if we use the green that we mix ourselves here, it will be a lot more harmonious compared to using the green that we picked from the color wheel before. Using the same method and picking colors from what we mix, we have a complete palette right now that has all the colors that we need for our painting. If you notice here, because the colors are very limited, we do not have access to two colors like the pinks and the purples. So because of this, our colors will actually appear more harmonious and it's still fine even though we don't have access to these colors. And obviously, other than the primary colors, we definitely need black and white. We can pick our black and white from any of the colors within the triangle of our color scheme. And we do not have to have them pure black or fully white either. In this case, the black and white is picked from the blue palette from our blue color. So now we can expand our color palette using black and white. I'm just painting in the black and then fading it out using opacity to pick out the colors to get a palette here. So once you're done, you will have a palette that looks like this. And if you fade out the white as well, you will have a palette that looks like this. So now you will have a total of two palettes with a lot of colors for you to choose from. I know what you're thinking, you're thinking that the colours are not enough but trust me, it is enough. And if you still think that you do not have enough colours, you can even blend within the first colour palette to get more tones in between. Also, don't forget that we can mix our grey scale from our black and white that we have chosen. So now that we have our palette, how do we get our skin tone colours? Skin tone is basically grey plus red and grey plus orange. This is the two most important swatches for the skin tone and the last one will be grey plus any colour that we feel that we want to use. These are three main swatches that you need that I already have here and now you can see that the reds that I picked when I mix it with the grey is somewhere between here and also the orange would be somewhere here. So the base colour, I picked it out from this swatch itself. Now it is very important that you pick the reds and the oranges from your colour palette instead of picking it from the Procreate colour wheel. This will ensure that your colours will remain harmonious. When you mix your skin tone, remember that your black and the white are not pure black and pure white. So since my white is a lot darker, my greys are a lot darker as well. So when I mix it with my skin tone, my skin tone is a lot darker compared to other portraits. 
once you are satisfied with your three skin tone swatches you can then blend them out to pick in the colors in between to create your palette for your skin tone you can expand this palette as much as you want by putting in black or white or other colors inside the palette itself and blend it out to get more swatches but once you're done you will have a lot of colors to work with in your portrait painting so when you're happy just rearrange everything and save it as a jpeg so you can refer to this later on and pick colors from this palette itself now that you have your color palette all ready you can paint without using your brain i'm serious you literally can just turn off your brain and paint so if you think that that item is red just paint red or if the item is blue just paint blue or purple paint purple but the most important rule is pick the colors from your palette and not the color wheel so the first thing we should do is to have a base color for everything and now let's just pick any random color from our palette and assign that to our background now i'm just gonna pick my skin tone color and drop it into the skin then I'm going to pick a grey purple colour and drop it into the hair. You're probably thinking that the base colours are too grey and muddy for you to paint. But actually if you start grey and muddy, it's a lot easier to control later on because later on you can go darker, brighter or more vibrant. Imagine if you start out using really really vibrant and bright colours. Later on if you want to go more vibrant and brighter, you can't because you've already reached the limit already. So by starting out grey and muddy, it ensures that you have a a lot more room to maneuver later on in your painting the next thing you want to do is to drop in some overall gradients for these three areas so now I'm just dropping in some blues and some reds onto her hair first basically you're just establishing the bigger overall gradient colors for everything right now without worrying about anything else for the face, it's very important to establish the orange first. This orange tint will immediately turn the skin tone into skin color instead of zombie color. I'm even picking up the yellows to use in the shadow areas. So it's okay to use any warm colors to warm up the shadows and this is a very important step in this process. During your painting process, you might change your background colors a couple of times and add a few gradients here and there but basically just remember that the background color is to help you see better when you are painting your portrait. By the way, if you are lost during this process, you can follow my Procreate Basics series first where I cover the basics of using Procreate. And anyway, the brush that I'm using today is the blending wash brush from my watercolor brush pack. You can get the watercolor brush pack down here. Once you have established the overall gradient of the painting, you can then start to pick the oranges and the reds for the skin tone and start shading your portrait in the shadow areas. The rule is to use reds and oranges in the shadow areas only so that you warm it up and it looks like skin tone and remember to only use colors from your palette itself and not the color wheel. So if you see here, my lips is totally different from the color of the original photo reference because I do not have that purplish red color for me to use but it's fine because I have my own color palette that is original and is unique to me as an artist so this is how you can use your own original colors in your portrait once you have established the reds and the oranges in the shadow areas you can then establish the other colors pick grays and fill in the whites of the eye then pick dark reds for the shadows of the eye once you have done with the shadows pick a bold red for the corners of the eyes and finally decide on the colors of the eyes and paint in the lashes as well now it's time for us to concern ourselves with shadows that are more gray and less red so if you look at the original photo reference you can see that the chin has more grays there so we're gonna drop in a grayer color around these areas Okay, the first layer for the face is done. We're going to repeat these same steps for the hair. So let's drop in some blues and some reds into the hair. Since we do not have purple, we are going to just make do with blues and reds. For the second layer, please follow these steps carefully. Duplicate the face layer and turn on the alpha lock. Paint this entire layer in white. Once you have painted it in white, change the layers blending mode to multiply mode. 
Continue picking colors from the color palette and paint on this new layer. This layer will serve as your shadow layer. So using the same principles, pick reds and oranges for the shadows and continue to build your portrait this way. Because the brush is very transparent, it's easy for you to control your colors this way and layer your colors one by one. But once you're comfortable and confident enough, you should lay in your darker darks. So once you're done with the second layer, your portrait should look pretty much like 80% finished except for the details. For the hair, you can use this same process or if you're lazy like me, you can just duplicate the layer and set it to multiply immediately. Then you can just use the eraser to erase away highlights. Again, your goal for the second layer is to establish the correct colour for the shadows and also the correct colour for your mid-tone. So once you feel that you are happy with the colours, you can call the second layer done. So is it possible that we can actually change the colour halfway through our painting? Like for example, right now, I really want my hair to be purple. So is it possible to do that? Actually, we can. But once I introduce purple, we will actually have a four colour colour scheme. The colour scheme that we currently have would break and we would need to fix it. So this is how you do it. So let's say I want to change the colour of my hair to be purple. I'm going to duplicate the base hair colour. Make sure alpha lock is turned on and I'm going to paint the entire layer in purple. Then I'm going to go back to my layer and change the blending mode, test a few of them and see which one I like. Once I found one that I like, I'm going to stick with that one. I can even go into hue, saturation and brightness tool and change the colour a little bit for this layer and see what I want. Immediately after we change the colour of the hair, we realise that we have a huge problem right now because the colours stand out too much and it doesn't gel with the portrait. So there is actually a few things we need to do. So for the first thing, first we need to edit this layer. We have to add a mask to it and let's invert this mask so that it's in black. Once it's in black, the whole layer will be invisible and we can use white to paint on it to get the layer to show again. So we'll paint bits and pieces of purple in the hair so that we can retain more of the original colour. Since now we have added purple to the colour scheme, it is essentially a four colour colour scheme right now. So it's very important that we still retain the previous colours and because we have added a new colour in, we have a huge problem. We actually need to bounce this new purple colour in other parts of the face as well. This will make the whole painting a lot more harmonious because light bounces off in the same way. So we need to find ways to inject purple in the face right now. Also, because we added this purple colour, the background colour doesn't work anymore. So if you do decide to break your own rules and add a colour or change a colour, know that you have to remap all the colours in your painting. So once you have really 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 decided your colour scheme, you can finally move on to the detail stage which is the last layer and you can just detail everything up. This is the stage where you can use the most vibrant colour, the darkest colour and also the brightest colour. So put in all your darkest darks and your brightest highlights and also your most vibrant, most saturated colour in your details. And if your colour scheme does not have the colours that you want, you can actually make them brighter or darker or more saturated but you have to be careful when you do this and don't go overboard and right now you no longer need to pick colors from your color palette you can just pick them from the portrait that you have been painting all this while and you can increase their intensity whenever you want remember i said that you need to bounce the purple back into the face this is a good opportunity for you to do so in the highlights or the shadow section so i'm trying to bounce a lot of uh, purples and pinks into the highlights of the eyes right now after the details is done, we are going to look at texturing. So for texturing, let's create a new layer, put it to add blending mode and we'll use the skin brush from my portrait brush pack and paint a skin tone colour all over the face. This will be our highlight texture. Let's alpha lock this layer and create a mask as well. Invert the mask and now use the same skin brush to paint in highlights for the texture. Paint this around your highlights area and or you can also use glitter from my glitter brush pack to paint in more glitter in this highlight section. Just remember to erase unwanted glitter if they are too much. 
to make the glitter more realistic, you can smudge them sideways a little bit. You can also start to use special effects brushes to put in effects for your portrait. I'm using the reflective brush to put in some highlights. When you're done, it is now a good time to adjust the colors of your skin tone so you can make it brighter or darker if you like using the curves tool. Or you can also use the hue, saturation and brightness tool to increase the intensity of the colors. But know that once you adjust the colors with any of these tools, you can no longer use your palette to pick colors. You have to pick colors directly from your portrait. Now I'm going to use the hairbrush on a new layer to paint in the highlights. I'm just doing this using one single color first, just to block it in. Once you are done, you can alpha lock this layer and then paint different colors for the highlights here. I usually don't worry too much about the colors until I'm done with everything. So now I'm going back to the shadow layer to add in more shadows using the hairbrush. If you would like the option to recolor this layer itself, you can do this on a new layer and then later on alpha lock it and recolor this. Once I'm happy with it, I am going to adjust the highlights layers, blending mode and see if I can find one that I like. So I settle on add and then I'm gonna smudge out some of the highlights to make it even more blended. But painting hair is usually very subjective, you can apply different styles and manners in painting so don't worry so much about following me exactly. Now I'm picking back the blue from the color palette and bouncing it off onto the hair. So I'm recoloring parts of the hair to be this blue. But because this blue is placed next to the purple, it appears green and that's fine because we already changed the color palette with the addition of purple. And now I'm adding in more of the colors from the palette onto the hair as well. Why does the blue look like green next to the purple and why does the blue look like blue in the colour palette that we have? Well, have you heard of the saying that colour is relative? This is exactly it. The colour changes depending on what colours is surrounding it. So basically, if you can understand this better, you can be a better artist. We can also bounce the green onto the skin. And the purples from the hair, I'm going to paint it onto the face as well. So this will really unify and make the colors look a lot more harmonious this way. So by doing this, we are actually introducing colors from every element back to each other. So let me prove to you that I'm correct by replacing the colors of our hair with the colors from the color palette this time. So instead of using purple hair, we are using colors like the blue and the reds from our palette. And you can see here it's a lot more harmonious compared to the one with the purple hair. So this proves that using a color scheme, especially a limited color palette in your painting can greatly improve the harmony of your painting itself. So if you're interested to find out more about color schemes, I'll be sharing a lot more examples and varieties in my part 2 of this tutorial. So see you next time and remember to comment, like and subscribe. Bye!